Welcome, welcome one and all to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. I just want to... Well, thank you. Thank you. You're, you're my favorite kind of people, fully vaccinated and chanting my name. We've, uh, what is it, two weeks? We have been off for two, two lovely weeks, mm -hmm. and I completely unplugged from the news. Uh, plugged in again last night, and now I need a vacation. Because <laughs> the news is a little, it's a little rough. <laughs> There's a fourth wave of coronavirus. We just got a global warming red alert for humanity. There are wildfires consuming Northern California and Greece. So naturally, there's one question on everyone's mind. Did I go to Barack Obama's birthday party? <laughs> you see... <laughs> I saw the paper. You saw the paper, okay. okay. See, this weekend, Obama turned 60, okay? In just 18 years, he'll be old enough to be president. Now, to, uh... He decided to celebrate by throwing this huge blowout on Martha's Vineyard. Everybody who was anybody was gonna be there, including yours truly. <laughs> but... Hey, here's the thing. Hot ticket. I, I A see, hot ticket I is what it was. But given the whole pandemic thing and the Delta variant, a celebrity mosh pit was maybe not the wisest choice, so... <laughs> Obama decided to scale back the guest list for his party. He mm. was forced to limit the invites to only his closest fiancés. <laughs> now, the New York Times says a lot of people missed out. For instance, they claim that late-night talk show host David Letterman and Conan O'Brien were cut from the guest list. But you know who they say was not cut? Comedian Stephen Colbert. <laughs> hey! Yeah. I mean... It makes sense. I am known for filling in when Letterman drops out of something. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. So, Steve, what was the party like? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't <laughs> go. And there you go. In, in the massive scaling back, I got massively scaled. <laughs> as soon as we heard, Evie said, that makes sense. Comedians should be the first people cut, and I, I don't think she was just talking about parties. I think she meant, like, lifeboats and stuff like that, too. <laughs> now, the news that I didn't go might be news to some people in the news. The Boston Herald reported the guests included late-night host Stephen Colbert and his wife Evelyn, who also owned property there. <laughs> Which, of course, leads to the question, so, Steve, what's your house like on Martha's Vineyard? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Boston Herald, could you please send me the address and the keys and maybe the alarm code? Because I'd love to stay there someday. <laughs> I don't own a house on Martha's Vineyard. Here's Daily Mail, too. Okay, so here's what, here's what happened. I'm, not, I'm sure you want to know, John. Yeah. Here's what happened. We were invited, honored to be invited, obviously, totally going. Have you got a nice dress? I got a nice new jacket. Really nice pants, expensive enough that they promised to give me an Italian ass, okay? <laughs> we booked a flight, got a hotel, then five days before the party, got a voicemail saying they were scaling back, okay? Message received. Once we called them back and said, so are we cut, or is this just an FYI? <laughs> they said no. <laughs> but we had the flight, <laughs> we had the hotel, so Evie wondered if we could still go to Martha's Vineyard, and since it was all non-refundable, I said, yes, we can. <laughs> and I guess that's why the press thought I was still invited, because Daily Mail spotted me at the airport in all of my celebrity glamour. <laughs> work. You better work, work, work. <laughs> Fantastic. I show Looking good, I like man. <laughs> I understand why they printed those, because look at those legs. Come on, baby. We know that sex sells. Anyway, we didn't go to the party. We still had fun. It's a beautiful island, lovely people. And it just goes to show you, kids, that if you work hard, put in your time, and get to be the number one show in late night television, you too can get disinvited from the cool kids party. <laughs> By the way, true story, true. 
By the way, Mr. Former President, my own 60th birthday is coming up in three years. <laughs> and you, sir, are not going to want to miss it. Please come. <laughs> I'd be so honored if you came. I'll scale me back to make room for you and Michelle, obviously. You're lovely people. Happy birthday, sir. And it's not just Obama's birthday party. The Delta variant is ruining a lot of plans. And I'll tell you all about it in my newest viral segment, The Delta Blues. Well down at the crossroads, better get my shot. Well down at the crossroads, better watch your snack. Ask the Lord of Buck and Mercy, cause COVID sucks a lot. Beautiful. Soul to soul to the devil for that song. <laughs> Earlier this summer, it looked like the pandemic might be ending. In June, the U.S. was averaging about 11,000 cases a day, but thanks to the Delta variant, we're right back in some muddy waters because now the number is over 100,000. Hold on one second. Let me get that. Okay, it was 11,000. 11,000. <laughs> beginning of May. It was... Oh, 107,000 two months ago. It's got a reproduction rate of <laughs> R8. Carry the one. That equals... <laughs> oh, my God. Someone else touched this machine. I don't... <laughs> okay. All right. All right. There you go. There you go. There you go, buddy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Oh, I've missed you, vodka hands. Oh. Yeah. I got it. 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 The fourth wave is being caused by the Delta variant, which has a shorter incubation period and spreads much faster than COVID Classic. As one epidemiologist explained, this is maybe the most contagious virus that we've ever seen in living memory. Yes, Delta is going through America faster than Mono through a high school drama club. <laughs> but of course, he's just one guy. What does he know? His name is only Dr. Larry Brilliant. <laughs> I want a second opinion that says everything is going to be OK. Somebody called Dr. Bobby Dumas. <laughs> As with all bad news, there's bad and then there's Florida, which has, <laughs> which has broken its own record. Wow. Either you're huge fans of Florida or you're not. I can't tell. <laughs> Florida has broken its own record for new coronavirus cases. Look how red and inflamed that thing is. <laughs> Someone better rub some ointment on the panhandle. One TV doctor explained it this way. It's so high in Florida that I think that if Florida were another country, we would have to consider banning uh, travel from Florida to the United States. Good luck. No. <laughs> you can clap all you want. You'll never keep Floridians out. You could build a wall, but they just pound mojitos and banana boat right over it. Now, there is one man in Florida who's not worried. That's governor and caveman asking... <laughs> Hold for booing. <laughs> Ron DeSantis. DeSantis isn't worried. He says that the spike is seasonal as Floridians spend more time together indoors to escape the summer heat. Yeah. It's just like when the governor of Pompeii announced, hey, guys, ignore the rain of ash. It's just volcano season. <laughs> OK, let's all make a fun pose for no reason. <laughs> Sad. Too soon? Too soon? It's not just the plague that keeps getting worse. It's also New York governor and guy hearing... 
That's called an insta poll we just did right there. <laughs> New York governor and guy hearing the news about Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> but he may not be governor much longer, given the report that just dropped from New York uh, Attorney General, which found that Cuomo sexually harassed multiple current and former staffers, as well as women who did not work for his administration. So he harassed only two types of women. <laughs> Those who work for him, and those who do not. <laughs> the report confirms accusations made by 11 women against Cuomo and includes disturbing details like he allegedly ran two fingers across the chest of an energy company employee, grabbed the rear of an unnamed employee, and asked an aide if she had piercings anywhere other than her ears. Interesting question. Governor, follow up. Do you have piercings anywhere other than your nipples? <laughs> the... Joke's based on a true story. <laughs> the day the report dropped, the governor responded in a lengthy pre-recorded video that maybe didn't address all the accusations. The New York Times published a front page picture of me touching a woman's face at a wedding and then kissing her on the cheek. That is not front page news. I've been making the same gesture in public all my life. I actually learned it from my mother and from my father. It is meant to convey warmth, nothing more. Indeed, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of photos of me using the exact same gesture. I do it with everyone, black and white, young, and old, straight, and LGBTQ, powerful people, friends, strangers, people who I meet on the street. I'm not a harasser because I do it to everyone. <laughs> no one's safe. Black, white, straight, gay, consenting, non-consenting. Those who see it coming, those are surprised. <laughs> Sleeping people, people who are awake but wishing this was all a bad dream. I learned it from my folks. It's a family recipe. <laughs> also, kissing people on the cheek is not what he's being accused of. That's like Jeffrey Dahmer apologizing for not having a permit to grill. <laughs> now, in the light of the report, many Democrats have called for Cuomo to resign, including President Joe Biden. You hear that? Joe Biden knows you don't touch women like that. You smell their hair and get back to work. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Stephen King and Black Panther star Winston Duke. But when we come back, should celebrities wash their children? The answer, surprise.